have to like pop out. Hello, everyone, and welcome in. It's Aaron St. Dennis, the FF Mad Scientist, joined by Jesse Moeller at jmoeller05. How's it going, Jesse? It's good. It was a glorious Christian McCaffrey, uh, James Cook day for your boy, who those are like my two highest roster dynasty running back. So we are loving life at the moment. It was looking a little shaky, but overall, you know, it's been a good day. So I cannot complain. How about you? What a chaotic weekend. I, I, I don't know. I have some leagues where I'm like, oh, this guy sucked, this guy sucked, this guy sucked, but I'm picked to win by 60 points. And it's like, this league doesn't make any sense. Like this, I don't know. Week 15 was chaos. That yeah. Keaton Mitchell injury last night was gruesome. Let me tell you that. <sighs> that was rough. His knees going the exact opposite way. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, that's, no. He's done for the year. No shit he's done. Maybe career. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. yeah, it's, it's a significant. Uh, I saw the still shot, and I was like, well, I want to bomb it. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. That running back position right. for them is so, cursed. We won't waste too much time. We'll get right into it. We're going to do the Week 15 game recaps here. Going to get us started with the Saturday games, which seemed like they took place like months ago. For real. Excuse me. Uh, we will start with Vikings Bengals and probably the only good game on Saturday. <laughs> go figure. Uh, 27 24 Bengals who go to 8 and 6. Vikings 7 and 7. So decent quarterback starts here from what looks like QB2 is moving forward. Jake Browning goes 324 with two touchdowns and an interception. Nick Mullins, 303 yards passing, two touchdowns, two interceptions, both in the low 20s. <clears throat> Uh, Ty Chandler was awesome, 132 yards and a touchdown. Nobody else did anything out of the running backs on Minnesota. Joe Mixon, 10 carries, 47 yards, saved the day with a touchdown. Three catches for 14 yards. Chase Brown had seven carries for 23 yards and three for 28, but he did not have the long touchdown this weekend. So he was, I don't know, he didn't kill you, but he didn't help you. Uh, the receivers. Jordan Addison had himself a day, six for 111 and two touchdowns. Justin Jefferson had seven for 84. Uh, on the other side, we have T. Higgins goes four for 61 and two touchdowns. Chase goes four for 64. Uh, and Tyler Boyd goes two for 53. Not much of note among the other receivers. Both tight ends were good, not necessarily great. I guess Hawkinson was pretty solid. Six for 63. Tanner Hudson goes 5 for 49, proving that I guess he should be considered a more re a reliable streaming tight end here. What has he moved up to here? Tight end 27, which isn't bad considering he didn't touch the field basically until week 9. So that's not terrible. He's not someone I'd look to start, but desperate times. Uh, both kickers were, I don't know, average. McPherson was okay, 2 for 2 on field goals, 3 for 3 extra points. Greg Joseph was not good, but you didn't start him. One for one on field goals, three for three on extra points. Defenses were both startable. Vikings had one interception, five sacks, and a forced fumble. Bengals had two picks, three sacks, and a fourth down stop. What stands out most to you in this one? Um, it was a night and day experience. And the, watching the first half compared to the second half, oh, boy, did Jake Browning come alive. And I was clowning Jake Browning because it was his first game, but like I, he's very much in that Gardner Minshew of backup quarterback role where they can come in, they can step in, and they can give you a few games. And you saw it, and you even saw the video on the sideline where he's like, "Don't you fucking cut me!" Right, where he was very motivated in this game, <laughs> even though he's been cut by four teams. But for some reason, he only gets the Vikings in. Really turned it on in the second half where he looked awesome. Um, the offense looks really good with him. I can't really complain. It does suck for you know Chase and Higgins. They know they're not living at the same level they were with Burrow. But, like, Higgins probably popped off, lived alive. Like, Chase Brown looked good. Mixon looks usable. So, for both of these offenses with backup quarterbacks, it's like, they're very much usable, which is nice to see because when you get a backup quarterback, you don't know how it's going to go. So, overall, like, I was happy with this game. <laughs> I was very worried at halftime because it looked awful. And then the second half, they flipped the switch. and It looked way better. Like, you saw Chandler. He was by far the best asset in this entire game. This is and the Chase one hasn't hit his team. Yeah. Chase, so he hurt his AC joint. I don't think he plays yeah. next week which would make T. Higgins a must-start wide receiver, too. I think that's the lar largely the reason why Higgins was good. It's probably the most – yeah, the most targets he's had in a while. So, yeah, uh, Higgins – like right away. I think Higgins is top 15 next week, assuming Chase is out. If Chase isn't out, I think they're both wide receiver twos. Higgins is a low-end one. That kind of scares me. Mm -hmm. Addison, Jefferson, this one scares me. I, I don't really know what to do. I don't think Addison's this good. 
I think Jefferson's a little better than this. I think these are four scary receivers here because I don't really know what to do. Obviously, Jefferson and Chase are the best of the four, but like the quarterback situations, the injury situations, I think I'm likely to just lump all four of them into the wide receiver two category uh, and just hope if you have to start any, they hit their upside, but they are – they, they seem to have really high upside, all four of them, but none of them have a uh, floor left anymore. Yeah, uh, Ty Chandler, saw, go ahead. Well, you can, I was going to say, we saw on Addison's like, crossing route touchdown. There was three defenders that went with Jefferson. Like That's how impactful he is in that offense. So it makes Addison usable where he can you know, open up the field a little bit. So it's nice for Jefferson, at least. But, yeah, overall, like I agree with you. I think Ty Chandler is a must-start for as long as Madison is out. Joe Mixon is a must start in the sense that he's just getting too much volume in a halfway decent offense. So I think you got to keep starting these guys probably as high end uh, running back twos. Um, tight end, Hawkinson's obviously a top five. We said earlier, Hudson's a streamer. And the two quarterbacks, I think, are QB twos. Anything you, you need to add there before we move on? Or Yeah, they, the, Ty Chandler's Bill Cow. So as long as uh, Madison's not playing, like you very much want Ty Chandler in your lineups. Like he. Basically ran all the running back routes. Well, he wasn't on the field a ton for that, but like overall his usage was very, very good. And he was actually good, which is something they haven't had the entire season already back. So I would expect him to be a big focal point in the final weeks on the season. What's the deal with Ty Chandler's stats? Oh, there we go. Yeah, he's much better without Madison. Who would have thought? Anyways, moving on. Indy 30, Pittsburgh 13. Pittsburgh has fallen apart. Uh, Gardner Minshew was good. 215 yards passing, three touchdowns. Mitch Trubisky was so bad he lost his job to Mason Rudolph. 169 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. The running backs are a mess here. Um, Jalen Warren goes 10 carries. You got to go start her new video. Yep, you do. <laughs> Jalen Warren goes 10 carries for 40 yards. Saved his day kind of by going 5 for 28 through the air. Najee had 12 carries for 33 yards, lost a fumble. So neither was efficient on the ground. Um, Zach Moss on the other side did leave with an injury. Uh, that would be an arm injury doing good, but we don't have any further information. That's scary. He had four for 13, three for 20, and his day was saved by the touchdown. So none of these guys were really good. Moss was saved by the touchdown. Tyler Goodson stepped in, went 11 for 69 and two for 10. So efficiency wise, he was probably the most efficient out of all four, and he's not a bad pick up here although on the waiver wire although i think it sounds like jonathan taylor will be back which would render him completely useless um moving on to the receivers deontay had four for 62 and a touchdown pickens three for 47 my is he fallen off in production from what he was early on in the season that's look at that not great his high is 16 points back in week seven over the last what eight weeks not good uh, this is DJ Montgomery. <laughs> DJ Montgomery is the best Colts receiver, two for 48, all of it on a touchdown. Pittman had the most yards and catches, four for 78, but no touchdown. Josh Downs, three for 19. The tight ends, a down day for Friermuth, who goes three for 16. And Mo Alley Cox has two for 21, but is saved by a touchdown. Uh, Boswell goes one for two, but registers no points in this one because of the missed extra point. Matt Gay was good, three for five on field goals, but he hit a couple from long distance and three for three on extra points, although he did miss two. Um, the DSTs here were, uh, the Steelers were tolerable, three sacks, one blocked one blocked kick, and a fourth down stop. And we have the Colts getting a pretty big game. I think they're top three by scoring, maybe top five. I, I have to look again. Two interceptions, four sacks, a forced fumble, a recovery, and a fourth down stop. This one's kind of a mess. The receivers were all over the place. Both quarterbacks, I guess Minshew was good. The, the receivers and the running backs are the issues here. The running backs, none of them were efficient. The receivers, uh, there was a lot of players who had bad stat lines here and were saved by a, a garbage time touchdown. What do you think? Further with it. Yeah, the, um, the one thing that stands out is Zach Moss left early in the game and he ran more, running, uh, more routes than either of the running backs. He was set for like a smash game, and he would have had a very good game if he would stay in the field. But injuries happen, and that's life sometimes. So at least he got you the touchdown to survive. But overall, like it was a pretty sloppy game. The Colts got out ahead and just kind of didn't really need to do anything because Pittsburgh's offense was that anemic. They could not do anything in this game. And it was just brutal to watch this game unfold where 
Pittsburgh tries as much as they want, but just Trubisky's just – he's garbage. He's not a good quarterback, and you see it with Trubisky. It's, it is rough. So that's why they're moving on to Mason Rudolph next week. They're, they're benching Trubisky. So this offense is going to be a roller coaster once again because we haven't seen Rudolph play in two years, like a year and a half. It's been a long time since he started a game. So, yeah, buckle up, Steelers fans. It's going to be wild. I would expect the running backs to be involved a lot with Warren and Najee, but in this role that they have in that offense, it's very limited as it is, right? So, overall, I'm really not trying to play Steelers in the playoffs. Like, I really don't want to go down with Deontay getting me or touchdown with Pickens with six. Just, like, no thank you. I'm not interested. On the flip side of the Colts, yeah. I don't want to play anyone in this game. Minshew, I think, is a decent QB, too. Like, Moss is hurt. Goodson is, I think, going to lose role to – Jonathan Taylor, who should be back next week. Like, I'm still going to play Pittman. I guess if that's his floor, it's not a terrible floor. But, like, aside from Pittman, I don't really want anyone on either team in this game. Yeah, and whoever is back for the Colts next week, they get Atlanta, who is just – they're really good against running backs. So, it's it's kind of sucks whoever goes against them anyway. So, overall, yeah. Like, I don't want to start many guys from this game moving forward next week, if at all. You might have to, though, but don't want to yeah. do it. The final uh, game on Saturday, Lions 42, Broncos 17. Lions moved to 10-4. and four. Broncos are now 500. Russell Wilson goes 223 for one touchdown and a fumble loss. Also added in a rushing touchdown. Uh, not a bad day. Goff won some leagues, some matchups this week. 278 yards, but five fucking touchdowns. Good God. Um, yeah. Uh, Samaj P. Ryan, he had six for 37 and one for 11 through the air. Javante Williams was not great, 12 for 27 and two for negative seven through the air. McLaughlin, two for two and two for 16 through the air. So the Broncos running backs were useless. The Lions running backs were not. Gibbs goes 11 for 100 yards and a touchdown. Two for eight yards and a touchdown through the air. He was awesome. David Montgomery goes 17 carries for 85 yards and two for negative three. He was not awesome, but... He was still pretty damn good on the on the ground. So Lions, what's that? 185 yards rushing just between these two alone. Oh yeah. Good God. Uh, the receivers, we got Cortland Sutton goes five for 71. Disappointing because he wasn't really or didn't get into the end zone. I mean, not a terrible day, but it's not what he had been doing. Judy, that was kind of his best game in a while. He had three for 74. Little Jordan Humphreys come Humphrey comes in and has three for sixteen and steals away a touchdown that nobody started. What's his start percentage? Zero and run. Yeah, zero zero. Yeah, that was very helpful, Sean Payton. Thank you. <laughs> St. Brown does what St. Brown does because of course the Lions go off because the league I had all my Lions in I lost last week. So thank you Lions for abandoning me when I needed you. Seven for one, twelve and a touchdown for St. Brown. Jamison Williams goes four for 47. Reynolds, two for 41. Nobody else really of note. Uh, the tight ends, nothing to, to see on the Broncos side. Laporta goes five for 56. Doesn't sound great, does it? But three fucking touchdowns. So like, yeah. good guy. Yeah. So you would have had, what, what do you have, like 100 points? If you started Goff, Gibbs, oh, no, more than that. Oh. You start Goff, Gibbs, St. Brown, and Laporta. Like, I have a guy in my league who's a Lions homer, and he had all four Lions this week. And this week, he's he put up, like, 140 points just on them. But. Yeah, I did, a, I did a tweet on that. All five of those starting options were if it was the two running backs, Goff, the tight end, and the wide receiver, is 128.12 points. Like, they smashed for you. So, if you started all five of those, you're looking great right now. Neither kicker did anything for fantasy. Badgley did what he had to, but it was all extra points. Uh, Will Lutz. Same thing. They didn't miss. They just didn't do much. Uh, the defenses were not great. The Broncos put up 0.5 on two sacks alone. The Lions were tolerable. They had uh, two sacks, a forced fumble, and a recovery. What do we take out of this, aside from the fact that the Lions have, like, a consolidated share here to, what, like, five players? A receiver, a tight end, a quarterback, and two running backs, and they're all pretty much must-starts. Even Montgomery, I know he didn't get the touchdown, so that's a down score. But if that's your floor, it's kind of like Pittman. If that's your floor, I'm starting you every week. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, if some of those touchdowns go his way, you're feeling a lot better about him this week. Um, interestingly enough, like I'm really encouraged by this game from Gibbs because this game got out of hand, and Gibbs was splitting work involved. So, like, he's basically at that point where he is an RB1 for fantasy no matter what, even in a positive game trip like this where you think it would hurt him. It really didn't. Like, he was involved in the entire game. It's just it's up nice to, to nine see. overall. I didn't realize yeah, he's he, that high up. 
he's been awesome this last second half of the year, which makes sense. Like he's been way better than Bijan. We can talk about Bijan later. <laughs> That's funny. I was pulling up Bijan as you said. He's <laughs> thirteen. I was thinking the yeah, same thing. I, I wanted to see. I wonder where Bijan ranks. Thirteen. The that last game killed him, but their ships in the night like cross each other going the opposite way. Um, but yeah, this Lions offense is incredible. Um, on the flip side, Denver's yeah. offense. I don't know, man. They get New England next week, so I don't think you're starting a single page or Broncos player except maybe Sutton. The weird thing for Rask. Williams, Williams is William. Like I don't know what the hell they're doing with Javante because his stuff went down the drain. Like he was third in routes run. He was only saw like forty something percent of snaps. Like he was just not that involved. And he wasn't very good. So I don't know if this was Sean Payton trying to teach him a lesson or whatever. But this is just it's been pretty rough for Javante. He's RB twenty nine on the year. It's not good for him. I think I'm starting yeah. Russ and Sutton next week, and that's it. Yeah, like I and I wouldn't even feel great about Roscoe needs to be like, no uh, in Superflex if I need a QB. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't want to yeah. start. I don't have any leagues where I don't think I have him in any single QB leagues. No, and either. if you have him in single QB, you're probably not still playing. So I have a three C team that is dependent on him. He's like my QB one on that team. It is treacherous to say the least. I'm I am not loving life in that league. <laughs> but yeah, like the Lions when they hit, they're incredible. Like this is the offense you chase for this exact reason. You want all these guys in your lineup just because when they hit. Like, it's amazing. It's just, it's that simple sometimes. All right, let's fire up the Sunday games. We start off with a bang. Carolina 9, Atlanta 7. Arthur Smith managing his way out of first place in the worst division in football. God, he's terrible. Both quarterbacks were terrible. This entire game was terrible. Desmond Ritter, 152 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. He sucked. Bryce Young, not to be outdone, sucked even more. He had 167 yards passing, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Good God. The running backs, Tyler Algier leads them in carries. 14 carries for 45 yards. Cordero Patterson, 5 carries for negative 2. Bijan, 7 carries for 11. What, what did he do here? Did he fumble and they just punished him all game? Because that's how, that's how idiot coaches are. Well, he was losing, like, goal line work and stuff already in this game. So, like, CPAT and Halgier, and then the fumble happened, and he was just basically just gone. Like, he didn't exist after that point. It what was, a god-awful fucking coaching job. He's he. <laughs> I'm, now that Brandon Staley's been whacked, I think I'm going to devote all my energy and just spam hating Arthur Smith on Twitter. He needs to go next. Yeah, it was the lowest snap share of his entire career. That's how bad it was. Chuba Hubbard, 22 for 87 and 2 for 16 through the air. He was pretty good. Didn't get a touchdown, so that, you know, capped his ceiling. Miles Sanders is droppable if you haven't already done so. Six carries for two yards. He's useless. Speaking of useless, let's move on to the receivers. Drake London leads the Falcons, 2 for 24. Nobody else worth mentioning. On the Panthers' side, Thielen, 4 for 43. Mingo, 4 for 32. Smith Marset, 4 for 31. Not a single startable receiver in that group. The tight ends, not to be outdone, were equally as bad. John, who was the prize in the group, going 2 for 61. Pitts, 3 for 37. And 2 for 32 from Tommy Tremble. This game was ugly. Young Wei Koo, 1 for 1 on the kicking. Extra points. He was terrible. Pinero barely got you by three for three on field goals. Wasn't terrible. Both defenses were good. How, how about that? You know, neither team scores. Your defenses team to, or your DSTs tend to be good. Falcons, three sacks, a forced fumble, and two fourth down stops. Panthers, an interception, a fumble, a forced fumble, fumble recovery, and a fourth down stop. This game, I'm scrolling through. I don't want to uh, roster defenses, kickers, tight ends. I don't want to roster a wide receiver. You have to roster Bijan at this point and Chubbard probably. I mm -hmm. think I want Bijan and Hubbard, and I'm treating both of them like running back twos moving forward. And then I don't really want to roster a single player on this entire game. Don't blame me. It's been so rough. So, like, they've shifted ever since the new LC took over. They've become very much a run-centric offense in Carolina where they're running a lot. Look at – if you look at Chuba's carries the last three games, it's like 22 – 25 or sorry, 25, 23, and 22, the back to back to back. Like he's been very much in that Bill Cow role that offense. Like they, it's interesting because they gave Miles Sanders that fat contract. And they're like, oh, actually, he's not that good. We have a better running back here at home. So go figure. So great job management. But yeah, like Chuba's really good. He just needs touchdowns. It's just really difficult for him to pay off. But he's a solid RB2, like moving forward. Like I like the way they use him in that offense, at least. Outside of that, woof, it's rough. It's really rough. So if you had Bijan, like I did on the bye, and you have him next week, it's not good. I'm not feeling great about that in that matchup. Like, just let me tell you. See, that's, 
That's one where in the few leagues I do have Bijan, it's a case of where I think I'd rather not have Bijan. Because if you play him, I almost feel obligated to have him in my lineup, but I don't want to have him in my lineup. It, yeah, it's just it's just, terrible. It's rough. Like it, Obviously, he'll be better than this game because this is just a disaster. They're so playing they, the Colts, so they're going to have to like, they they're gonna, they, So they're going to have to move it fast. Like you're, gonna, It's going to be forced to play fast. So at least there's that, but man, it's rough. So I'm going to start him again, and I'm going to let him burn me. But what I'm what yeah, probably. <laughs> what are you going to do? Exactly. Next up, Cleveland 20, Chicago 17. I'm surprised this was this close. Fields, not a great day. 166 passing, a touchdown, and two picks. Seven for 30 on the ground, which is not like him. He normally has about double that. Joe Flacco, 374 yards passing, two touchdowns, but the YOLO ball led to three interceptions perhaps keeping him out of the top five at quarterback on what would have been a good week. The carousel here. Let me just state this. I heard someone say this earlier, and I really like to echo that this. These six running backs, I don't want any of them. I'm done. They all keep changing. I wanted Jerome Ford, but that's been changing to Kareem Hunt, who's getting all the high-value touches. They're mixing in Pierre Strong. This, it's Foreman, then it's Herbert, then it's Roshan. I want none of them. But Roshan goes five for 36 and four for 24 through the air. Herbert, six for eight. That's impressive. Neonta Foreman, not to be outdone, goes six for negative six. How? how? <laughs> Good question. That is exactly Jerome so Ford, bad. eight for 20 and four for 11 through the air. Kareem Hunt, seven carries, eight. Yeah. Good God, these guys sucked. Yeah. I'm going to skip this section and just say what I originally started with. These Good six... Work. Don't roster any of them. Don't start any of them. Even Jerome Ford. I don't care. What is he, 22, 20, 18? I don't care. I'm done with them. I'm done with this carousel here. Hunt is taking over for Ford. These guys are a shit show. I want nothing to do with this. Moving on. We have the wide receivers. This is what? Oh, DJ Moore. Okay, I thought so. I couldn't remember. DJ Moore, four. I'm sorry. I had a temporary stroke there for some reason. Couldn't remember his name. DJ Moore, four for 52. Nobody else worth mentioning, aside from the fact that Darnell Mooney lost in the game. If he could catch, they would have won. Oh. Amari Cooper, who I benched in this league, despite the fact that I wanted to play him, but I was talked out of it for DeAndre Hopkins. Lovely. Four for 109 and a touchdown. He was excellent. Uh, did he have 14 targets again this week? No, he only had, he had eight, eight. But he had more points. He had double the points on half the targets. Yeah, he won the game for them, but that last one. Um, Cedric Tillman, nice. four for 52. Nothing else of mention there. The tight ends, Cole Komet was great, five for 23 in the touchdown. And Joku was incredible, 10 for 104 in a touchdown. These guys are both must starts. The kickers were both average. Six points for Santos, eight for Hopkins. Both DSTs were great. The Bears put up three interceptions, four sacks, and a fumble and a touchdown. Uh, the Browns had two interceptions, a forced fumble, a recovery, and two fourth down stops. Both put up exactly 20.5. Uh, I don't even know where to begin here. Go for it. Uh, it's a, Joe Flacco is an experience, man. It was a struggle early on. They were rough, and he brought them back. Even though they had three interceptions. Was this a weather outsourced. issue? Like, I don't even – yeah, it wasn't great weather in that game. But, like, he turned it on the second half, and he was going yellow. They have – the fun thing is – they have the highest neutral pass rate in the NFL with Joe Flacco, which means they are slaying the rock. Like, they do not care. They're going to pass. They're going to pass a lot. And this is what we see from Flacco. Like, there's going to be some turnovers, but, man, there's going to be some highlights with the Amari Cooper down the one, like, 60-yard touchdown to basically seal the game for them. And he puts up 380 total yards passing in fields. Like, he has three interceptions, and he drastically outscores fields in fantasy. Like, that shows you where Flacco is at. Like, it's hard to trust fields with what's going on right now. Uh, it's just – that was a rough game. But, like, speaking of Ford – his role is so much better. It's just like you're talking about. It's the touchdowns because he had 20 routes run. Kareem Hunt had nine. He had 35 snaps to 22 for Hunt. He had four targets. Hunt had one. And he even had more carries. It's just touchdowns. That's what it is. It's just unfortunate. Then this game, nobody was efficient on the ground. Um, Njoku is a god. So, like, Njoku in this role in this offense is incredible. So, Njoku, we were talking about McBride and stuff off screen. Njoku is up there. Like, his role with Flacco is some of the best you'll see. Like, for just – Getting absolutely peppered with targets. So, yeah, I want uh, Nujoku everywhere in this playoff run because he's going to be very impactful the next two weeks. I feel like this is finally the year where we said tight end is deeper than ever before, and it's come true because I feel like there's probably 12 tight ends I feel comfortable starting on a weekly basis, and these are two of them right here. Komet, 
Laporta, we've talked about a few. I don't want any in there. Uh, I don't want any there. Well, Frymuth maybe. TJ Hawkinson. Like, I never thought tight end would be the safest position, but here we are. Yeah, nice. Moving it's on. Nice. Bucks 34, Packers 20. Baker fucking Mayfield, 40 points. 381 plus four touchdowns. Good God. That's a hell of a day. Jordan Love goes 284 yards passing and two touchdowns. Both quarterbacks lost the fumble. Uh, the running backs, Rashad White, he's got to be top five, right? Top four. There he yeah, is. he's got to be up there. Good God, he's fourth. So 21 carries, 89 yards, two for 50, and a touchdown receiving. He got everything. The Packers side of the ball, Aaron Jones got most of the work, didn't do a whole lot with it. 13 for 53, 4 for 16 through the air. So wasn't terrible. I guess it's better than what he's been giving you because he finished a game. So uh, I remember that pregame talk. I was like, God damn it, him wrong. The receivers, the Packers used to be a three-headed monster, and now they are, even with Christian Watson out. It's just another young receiver being mixed in. Chris Godwin resurrected from the dead, 10 for 155. David Moore goes 2 for 68 and a touchdown. Mike Evans, 4 for 57, saves his day with a touchdown. Jane Reed, 6 for 52 and a TD. Dontavian Wicks, who uh, he's he's a good waiver pickup. Getting a lot more snaps. I don't know if the targets are there, and Christian Watson could be back. But still, Wicks goes 6 for 97. Dobbs, 3 for 30, is disappointing. Yeah, Reed might be the guy I think to own there. This is a mess. Uh, there, there's a lot of messy teams. I, I don't really know what to say on a lot of these. Reed's also hurt too right now, so that's yeah. why I, it's it's not. Oh, yeah, what did he do? I forgot. He went out mid game before he got checked for a concussion, and then he hurt his foot, and he basically didn't play the fourth quarter. So like his snap share is weird in this game because of that. I don't even have an update on. Co Keefe is the tight end there in Tampa Bay because he got a touchdown, one for two. Kate Otten goes two for 44, but no touchdown. Tucker Craft, four for 57 and a touchdown. Both kickers were good, good-ish. McLaughlin puts up 11 points. Anders Carlson, eight. Both defenses were salvageable. The Bucks get 12 points on two sacks, two forced fumbles, a recovery, and, a, and two fourth down stops. The Packers get nine and a half on five sacks, a forced fumble, and a recovery. This is yet another game where it's a lot of messy stat lines. Like, it's just... Some blow-up games, like Rashad White is a must-start. Baker, I think, is a high-end two. Jordan Love is a mid-range two. Other than that, I don't feel great about really anything. This is another one where there's like a whole group here. Of, what the fuck do we do with these guys? Yeah, that's, this is basically the floor with Mike Evans you get from this game. And like, that's, you know what, you can live with that. Um, yeah, Godwin, the last two games, he's been peppered at a really high rate. So I don't know if it's shifting or what it is, but it's worth noting. I'm still going to have him lower my rankings, but like the last two weeks, he's seen double digit targets. So that should something you can grab attention to. And if you want to throw him in your lineup, absolutely go for it. On the flip side, yeah, I don't know what to do with the wide receiver core. It's just a mixed bag. Reed's the guy that's the best one in that room, but he's dealing with injury. So it'll probably be Dobbs, but I don't have much confidence with him. Jordan Love was good. He just wasn't Baker Mayfield level good, which, you know, that's absurd because he had 381 four touchdowns. Love was. Love was still pretty good. Like he didn't kill you in this game. Um, the running back situation, Rashad White's the stud. Like, he is who he is. He's going to be a volume just king. So if you have Rashad White, you have a top five running back each move moving forward. And Aaron Jones finally showed life, so you could probably start Aaron Jones next week if you're still alive with Aaron Jones on your roster. I don't know how many people are, but like you can start him. Dolphins 30, Jets 0. <laughs> Zach Wilson, negative 9.6 points. Trevor Simeon, negative 1.6 points. I don't think I've ever seen a game with two quarterbacks on the same team put up negatives, but the Jets. Tua, not a great game. 224 and one touchdown. Kind of what we all expected in this one. Israel Abanaconda leads the way for the Jets. He goes four carries for eight yards, two for 11 through the air. Brees goes six for 12 on the ground and one for six through the air. Not great. Raheem Mostert, 15 carries for 42 yards, two touchdowns. Makes his day wonderful. A-Chan goes nine for 32 and three for 30 through the air, but no touchdowns. Kind of a disappointing day there. The receivers, Garrett Wilson is the top jet, three for 29. Lazard goes three for 21. Gibson, two for 29. Jalen Waddell, the big the big one over on Miami, mm -hmm. eight for 142 yards and a touchdown. Nobody else did anything out of the receivers. 
Two startable tight ends, I guess, in this one. Tyler Conklin goes four for 18. What? That stat line doesn't make any sense. Four for 18. Oh, this is tight end premium. Okay. I was like, how does that equal seven and a half points? It is if it's four point four times 1.5, right? Because yeah. then it's yeah, six. Yeah, yeah. okay. So this is tight end premium. Durham Smythe goes four for 32. So these two actually suck, even in tight end premium. The kickers, Zerline sucked. Jason Sanders puts up 12 points on three for three for field goals and extra points. The Jets' defense was not good. Three sacks, but 30 points against. The Dolphins were awesome. 30.5 points, two interceptions, zero points allowed, six sacks, two forced fumbles, two recoveries, and two fourth down stops. The Jets are bad. The Dolphins actually did something against a good defense. Anything else to say about this one? I mean, yeah, it, it's really simple. Um, the, the one thing is, without Tyreek Hill, Waddle is a stud in that offense. So if we don't have Tyreek Hill next week, which who knows, I think we will. But, like, you see a glimpse of life past Tyreek Hill. And Jalen Waddle steps forward, and he's a fantasy stud. So if you have that, start Waddle. Um, if Hill's back, like, Waddle will bump back down. But, yeah, it's – the Jets' offense is just brutal. It kills both Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson. So I'm assuming most people that had them are eliminated. If you have them next week, like, you got some decisions to make if you want to play them or not because it's going to be rough. Whoever the starting quarterback is, like that, I don't think they've announced it, but it's Zach Wilson or Trevor Simeon or whatever bag of bones they're going to bring in to, to that offense. Aaron Rodgers almost made it back, but they're eliminated, so I don't think he comes back. Yeah, I think he can be medically cleared this week, but they're out, so why bother? Yeah, who knows what's going on? Yeah, it's rough. All right, I'm sick of this game already. <laughs> Start your Dolphins, especially the studs. Don't yes. play any of your is, Mostert's incredible. Mostert, Waddle, A-Chan disappointing, but he should be better. Yep. Same with Tua. Disappointing, but should be. Who do they get next week? It's a better matchup, right? Dallas. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's kind of. They'll, they'll force them to. Yeah, Dude. they got to score more. So Jets, Cowboys, Ravens. That's not a great yeah, playoff schedule. Is that, is, yeah, it's it's rough for him if you have him in fantasy. I don't think Tua is going to be on too many championship winning squads this year. I don't think so. Nope, not so much. Chiefs, 27. Patriots, 17. Closer than I expected. Mahomes does what he's been doing. He's kind of a low end QB one six here, but I don't think he's probably 12th this week, 305 yards passing two touchdowns, two interceptions, both interceptions went off of a receiver's hands. So they're not his fault. Bailey Zappi goes 180 yards passing a touchdown and an interception CEH 13 for 37, but goes four for 64 and a touchdown through the air. McKinnon gets all of his on one completion. Did he throw a pass? Yeah, he had two touchdowns. He threw a <laughs> passing touchdown. That's what that is. And he like. caught one, too. <laughs> so he Let's threw one and caught one, but didn't do wild. much else. So that's just wild. Zeke Elliott, 11 for 25 and 5 for 21 through the air. Not a great day. Kevin Harris goes 4 for 25 and has a touchdown to be relevant in this one. Rashi Rice is a stud, 9 for 91 and a touchdown. Devontae Parker, 5 for 44. Douglas goes three for 30, 33. Nothing else to see here in the receivers. Kelsey disappoints. He goes five for 28. Hunter Henry goes seven for 66 and adds in a touchdown. Butker was good. He put up 10 points, four for Ryland, who was bad. Both defenses were good, not great. 12 and a half points for the Chiefs, 11 and a half for the Patriots. Uh, Matt, Mahomes got really mad that his receivers aren't catching the ball. I think with the that exception of Mahomes, I want to start Rashi Rice, Kelsey, and I don't think I really want anyone else here. I think Kelsey moving forward is no longer my dynasty tight end one either. He's at, oh, at yeah. best, he's three. Yeah, I, I'm i going to prefer like a lot of guys over him. You're kind of seeing a little decline mixed with some injury like that he's been dealing with, and he got injured in this game as well. I think he But, yeah, like they desperately need somebody on the offense, and they have Rashi Rice. who like I'm more confident in Rice than I am with Kelsey, which is crazy because they basically have the same stat line, and Kelsey's disappointing and Rice is better like for usage-wise. It's just it just shows you where they're at. So Rashi Rice is really good, man. He's finally they finally have a wide receiver one they're confident with, and you see it on the field and forward. So overall, like Rashi Rice is going to be a nice play in the playoffs for you. Like it's it's a really good role. He's a really good player. I know we didn't like him coming out, but he's proven us wrong. And the running back situation is just a mixed bag. Like you know they're gonna get looks down at the goal line, so that's kind of what you chase with those guys. So overall, you know, you just throw a dart on McKinnon or you know Ceh and live with it. Check those on back. Aside from if you're desperate and need Zeke or Douglas, is there a single Patriot you're even considering rostering? No. Like yeah. this, I, I don't trust the Hunter Henry performance. He's been nothing for like the entire year and he pops up here. So just no thank you. It's like, it's just so weird. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
1920, nothing. 2020. Yeah. It's just so mixed bag. You yeah. can't trust it. You got to go get her? Okay, I'll move on to the next one. We have Saints 24, Giants 6. Uh, Tommy DeVito, he goes 20 for 177, 4 for 36 on the ground. Derek Carr is 218 yards passing and three touchdowns, so he was good. Uh, Saquon Barkley, nine carries, 14 yards, two for 23 through the air. Alvin Kamara, 16 carries for 66 yards and five receptions for 44 yards. Mm -hmm. uh, the receivers, mm -hmm. Darius Slayton, we have four for 63. Wandale Robinson, four for 25. Nothing to see on the Giants' side. Nothing really to see on the Saints' side. Kirkwood led the way, but it was one for seven and a touchdown. Rashid, I guess, led the way for receiving without the touchdown. Three for 36. Uh, I don't really want any of the receivers in this one. That was ugly. The tight ends were salvageable. Waller had four for 40. Bellinger was not two for 13. Juwan Johnson had two for 38, but the touchdown saved his day. Same could be said about Jimmy Graham. Two for nine, but a touchdown. Foster Moreau chips in three for 13. Both kickers were not great. Bullock puts up five points, eight points for Groupie. Uh, the Giants' DST had two points as they recorded only one sack. The Saints were good, 20.5. They had seven sacks and two fourth down stops. Uh, Jesse's not back, so I think this one's pretty easy to sum up. I think Derek Carr, for me, is still a low-end QB2. DeVito's a desperation streamer at best. Kamara, I'm still firing up as an RB2. Barkley, probably the same thing, although with no confidence. I don't want any receiver on either team unless it's a Lave when he's back and healthy. Waller and Jawan Johnson have both been good this week, but I'd prefer to steer clear of them, and I don't mind the Saints' defense. Uh, we can just wrap that one up then. Not a whole lot to see. It was kind of ugly. I will move on. It is Houston 19, Tennessee 16. Case Keenum got the start for the Texans. He put up 229 yards, a touchdown, and an interception in a mediocre game. Same for Will Levis, who got hurt. I don't recall what it was, an ankle? Yeah, an ankle. Uh, it sounds like he may miss some time. Not great for DeAndre Hopkins, if that's the case. He puts up 199 yards and one interception. He did have a rushing touchdown on four carries. Devin Singletary is the guy in Houston. He had a snap share of 70, 75, and I believe it was single digits for Pierce. I'll double check. 5%. So Damian Pierce is no longer a thing. Singletary gets 26 carries for 121 yards, four for 49 through the air. The other side, it's disappointing for both guys. Henry goes 16 carries for nine yards. That's impressive. Four receptions for a yard. So he has third. Uh, he has 20 touches for 10 yards. Good God. Tajay Spears has nine carries for 30 yards and one reception for seven. The receivers were a little more uh, to see. Noah Brown goes eight for 82 and a touchdown. Three for 30 for Robert Woods. Uh, on the Titans side, Traylon Burks has three for 62. Chris Moore has three for 39. Not a whole lot else to see. The tight ends were, you know, not terrible. They didn't kill you. They were just kind of there. Dalton Schultz goes four for 58. Chigo Conquo, three for 36. The kickers, Fairbairn was pretty solid, 17 points, four for four on field goals, one for one in extra points. Nick Folk was bad. He has four fantasy points, one for one on field goals, one for two on extra, one for two on extra points. Both defenses were great because both offenses sucked. The Texans put up 20 points on one interception, seven sacks, and a forced fumble. Titans put up 18 on one interception, four sacks, and a touchdown. So the defenses are good, but matchup dependent. I want to avoid the kickers. The tight ends are desperation streams, I think. As we currently sit, especially if Levis is out, I want no pass catcher on the Titans. I will take Noah Brown or... Uh, buh, buh, buh. who am I missing here, Jesse? Not Tank Dell. What, Nico? Nico. If Nico, Nico's not done for the season, right? No, he should be back. Should. So I will take Noah Brown or Nico uh, when he's back. Devin Singletary, I think, is a must-start RB2. RB, or he's 31 overall, but that's that's going to move up before the season's over. I am done with Henry in, in Dynasty, J Spears. I don't like either of them currently right now. So in this game, basically, I want me some Devin Singletary, 
Brown or Nico, and I don't want anyone on either. There seems like a lot of matchups where I say one or two players, and I don't want anyone on on either team here. So I definitely want Singletary, and I think I definitely would like Nico or Noah Brown. I, what, I don't, what do you take away from this messy, ugly game? Yeah, the, um, it's going to be weird with Tennessee with the quarterback situation, but they get um, – I'm up like on it. They get Seattle next week. So that'll probably be a good matchup where if you survived with Henry, then you probably going to trust him. Yeah. So, like, you can trust him. It's just this was just an awful game. It just backfired completely. Did not work out well for them. So, overall. But, yeah, like, we talked about Singletary on the morning show last night or yesterday. And we were like, man, this one game out of the last four has not been good for him. So, and then we we're like, do we charge him? I was like, you can start him. It's just lower. And then, of course, he goes off. Complete bell cow. All the passing down work, all that stuff. So, yeah, like, I want Singletary in my lineups moving forward for sure. Yeah, I think this one's pretty easy to summarize. <laughs> yeah. There's not really anyone here that you really want, Singletary. Uh, moving on. 45-29, to 29, San Francisco over Arizona. Brock Purdy, 242 yards passing and four touchdowns. Kyler is disappointing with 211 and one touchdown, two interceptions. Was injured at one point, right? Because Clayton mm -hmm. Toon came in. Was that just to run a certain player, or was it? I think it was. Oh, he was. Right? He had I, something going on. Was it a groin injury or something? He was walking funny on the sidelines. Yeah, they. I saw a note like a notification where it was like, "All right, Kyler's going to check the tent," and then he came back. So I don't yeah. know what it was, but it wasn't serious, I guess. CMC at playoff time. It's a beautiful thing. Eighteen carries for 115 yards and a touchdown. Five for 72 and two touchdowns. So what's that? 187 yards and three touchdowns. That's all. Yeah, just no big deal. James Conner was pretty good too, but not compared to McCaffrey. He had 14 carries for 86 and a touchdown and three for three for three on the receiving. Lovely. Amari Demarcado was actually usable. A lot of it was on the touchdown. Four carries for 64 yards and a touchdown. Debo was the only startable receiver, it turns out here. He has one carry for 11 yards, four receptions for 48 and two touchdowns. Ayuk puts up three for 37. The excuse me. The best stat line on the Cardinals was one carry for five yards and two receptions for 15 from Greg Dorch. Did Hollywood not play or did he just not do anything? Yeah, he, he got injured. It just – it was not good for him. He went in injured. Yeah, he went in injured, re-injured himself. Oh, yeah, 32% of snaps, so he did play. Just take my lineups. Don't play, don't play Hollywood next week. The tight ends. Kittle was okay, two for 54. Trey McBride was awesome. He is my tight end one right now in Dynasty. I have him at one and Laporta at two. He is 10 for 102. He did put 26 points without a touchdown that Eli Higgins stole from him. Four for 44 and a touchdown. Otherwise, McBride might be the tight end one on the week. Yeah. Uh, both kickers were decent. 10 points for Moody, one for one on field goals, six for six on extra points. 14 points for Prater, who goes three for three on field goals and two for two on extra points, but he hit from 40 and from 50. The Niners' defense was solid, 16 and a half points on two interceptions, three sacks, three forced fumbles, and a defensive touchdown. The Cardinals had no defensive value, put up, or gave up 39 points, and were a negative 2.5. Uh, I don't know if there's anything you can take away from this other than start James Conner and avoid every other Cardinal, basically. That's basically what it is. I will say you can target who's ever going against San Francisco running backs, like who's ever playing against them running backs. They're giving up yards and like points. It's not terrible. It's not the worst matchup in the world, as opposed to the other position. So like it's okay to play a running back against the 49ers defense. That would be Baltimore and Washington. Ooh. Never mind. I don't know who which. Yeah, scratch Never that. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. There's a, we don't even know who the start. Yeah, yeah I think Melvin yeah, Gordon is playing. Mitchell like, looked Baltimore. explosive yesterday until his knee God. exploded, and then it's. Brian Robinson. If Brian Robinson's back, I'll play him, but I don't really want to fire up Gibson in this, so never mind. Yeah. We'll pass. Yeah, it's, just, it's rough. Like you, these, you, these offenses are consolidated. You know what's going to happen. Sometimes if one of the guys super pops off, like McCaffrey hurts the other guys, but like I, I know we all love Ayuk, but Debo's just been better this year than Ayuk for fantasy, and his role continues to be good. So like I, I I'm going to trust Debo over Ayuk. It's, he gets better usage, so is what it is. You know, it's, it's funny. You know, okay. So Debo's wide receiver 12, Ayuk's wide receiver 14, which means next year Ayuk's going to be drafted higher than Debo because yep. whoever finishes yep. higher gets drafted lower the following year. Well, yeah, people, love, people absolutely love Ayuk because he's such a good player. It's just the situation brings it down at all. So, anything else to add to this one? 
no. I mean, we, we know what it is. Kittle. Purdy's a stud. Like, if it weren't um, for yeah, one I would... solid catch for Kurt, or like for Kittle that was like thirty-seven yards. That's a really shitty day. Yeah, that's just it's rough for him sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's just part of that offense. Same thing with Ayuk. Like these guys get brought. If they're on other teams, they would be the focal point of the offense. This so, yeah, is McBride's crazy. incredible. Sexy. It's absurd, Titan, man. Holy like, I've been shit. Look I've been preaching this. this for two months. I'm like, dude, McBride's the guy. Like of all the tight ends, McBride's the guy you want. Um, and yeah, Purdy is a, I don't know, man. I don't know where to put him in dynasty, but like, I think people are way too low on Brock Purdy. I think he's top 12 now, possibly I top 10. He's I top 12 so. at least, I think. Yeah, like a hundred percent. And you could probably still get him at a cheaper price than that. Wow. All right. Rams 28, Commanders 20. Sam Howell gets benched for a second, second straight game. He has 102 yards passing. A touchdown and an interception. Jacoby Brissett comes in in relief and puts up basically the same thing, except 124 and two. Oh, no, two two touchdowns, no interception. So he was better because Jacoby Brissett, go figure, provides spark and relief. They still said they're going back to Howell, so it's completely useless. Not like you're starting Brissett in the fantasy playoffs anyways. Just makes you worry, can you trust Sam Howell next week? Yeah, that's the problem. Week after against Jets and 49ers. So you're not playing Sam Howell again this season. Sure. Yeah, just keep him on the bench. Yeah, yeah. Keep him on the bench. Agreed. So Matt Stafford, he had a decent day, 258, two touchdowns. Actually, that's a pretty solid day. Um he's been rolling lately. Running backs. Gibson doesn't do much, even without Robinson. He goes four for 15 and five for 20. Chris Rodriguez goes 10 carries for 35 yards. Kyron has a big day, 27 carries, 152 yards, and a touchdown. Lost two fucking fumbles. Adds in five catches for three yards. So you, in PPR, he had a lot more value than in non, but uh, still solid. Uh, the receivers, Terry McLaurin was good. Six for 141 and a touchdown. Curtis Samuel was also good. Five for uh, 42 and two touchdowns. Jahan Dotson is dead. One for 12. Good God. <laughs> why did he fall from grace? He was like a consensus top 30 receiver in Dynasty coming in. You could probably find him on waiver wires in some leagues. Like, look at this. What do you have? One, two, two, you, two games you could consider him startable all season. It does, the, the offense makes no sense with the amount they pass and how uninvolved McLaurin and Dalton have been. It's really baffling. Yeah. It's just, it doesn't make any sense at all. Cooper Cup goes eight for 111 and a touchdown. Demarcus Robinson stealing some of the action here. Goes two for 44 and a touchdown, limiting Puka, who goes five for 50. That's probably his worst game in a while. That's also a situation I'm not all that fond of. They seem to be two good Nakua games, two good Cup games, two good Nakua. Like, they're alternating here. I feel like you're playing Russian roulette. Um, The tight ends, Logan Thomas goes one catch, seven yards. Tyler Higby, four for 36. Nothing great there. Both kickers were bad. Under eight points. Commander's defense put up 11, three sacks, two forced fumbles, and two recoveries. Nine and a half for the Rams for one interception, a sack, a block kick, and two fourth down stops. So both were startable. This one, aside from, like, I think Stafford is a high end two. Kyron Williams is probably a, a borderline one two for me. I think Cup and Nakua are also borderline one two. I, I, other than that, like, this one's scary. I don't want any any. I don't want the commanders running backs or quarterbacks. I don't really want to. Rec- I don't think I want anyone on the commanders. Like, yeah, it's maybe if, so. The interesting thing with Terry is once Brissett came in, holy shit, Terry McLaurin was going off. Yeah. So I was like, man, where's this been all year for McLaurin? He's really good. It's just I don't. And Sam Howell issue, like the issues with him and everything like that. But yeah, I put out a tweet. I was like, man, if only Terry McLaurin had <laughs> Brissett. Is it the difference in his play. YPC here? Yeah, like it's just nuts. It's uh, yeah, it's frustrating. It's How is that possible with Brissett? Where they, you would think Howell Brissett. would be chucking it downfield more. Yeah, he's just in a, he's just inaccurate and stuff. So like he doesn't do you know he's kind of all over the place. He's on that Justin Fields roller coaster, you know, all the sacks, negative oh, plays, yeah. and things like that. So it's just kind of just I don't know. The Washington is just an enigma in itself. It's so hard to trust those guys. But yeah, with Brian Robinson comes back, you can trust him. But by the way, <clears throat> Kyron Williams is the RB two on points per game. So, like, you should be firing up Kyron Williams everywhere. Like, he should not be on anyone's bench. He even fumbled twice, and he still got all of the work. They don't even care. Exactly. They're like, Kyron's by far our best guy. So, yeah, Kyron Williams is a stud. Like, I'm plugging him in. Back-to-back 25-carry back games, three in Just a row a over 20. He's a monster. And he's sub-200 pounds for the sub-200-pound crew. Suck it. And he's so, yeah, he's really good. 
yeah, that he's offense is small nice. and slow. And, and still it does not matter. Yeah, like we were talking about this before, it's like scheme matters, and he fits that scheme so well. So yeah, I think we need to focus on that. that is Somewhere a door. draft analyst's head just exploded. <laughs> exactly right. It's, it's like weird running back in situation. Yeah, opportunity over talent at running back. It, it's all that matters. At case in point, Bijan Robinson. All right, Buffalo thirty-one, Dallas ten, and I don't even think that game was this close. <laughs> uh, Dak. 134 yards and an interception. Just Justin Allen. Josh Allen goes. Really? Really? That yeah. 94 yards passing and a touchdown? And 20 did yards. not pass. Look yeah. at 15 oh, touchdowns. you're right. They fed Cook and he ran. It yeah. was the James Cook show, man. It was yeah. nuts. So move on to those running backs. Pollard goes 11 for 52. And James Cook goes 25 carries, 179 yards, and a touchdown, two for 42, and a touchdown through the air. And, yeah, you're right. It was the James Cook show. Um, Ty Johnson added in nine for 54. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, C.D. Lamb was still decent uh, because of a rushing touchdown and seven for 53 uh, receiving. Stephon Diggs disappointing, four for 48. Uh, none of the uh, Buffalo – uh, tight ends registered a point. Jake Ferguson goes six for 44. So still two usable Dallas assets here. Both kickers were bad. Dallas defense was terrible. Bills was good. Nobody played them though. 12 points, an interception, three sacks, and a fourth down stop. So Buffalo, who do they got left? Like James Cook looks awesome, but they got Chargers and Patriots. So you are firing up James Cook me. next week. Good grief. Like I'm just putting them in. So Interestingly enough, the Cowboys played too high a lot in this game, and that usually means you could run on them. And Buffalo took full advantage of it, and they just unleashed James Cook, who's a good running back. And it's weird, like when you give good players good looks, like these things happen. So yeah, this this game's really out of whack. Like you're not going to see games like this from Buffalo or Dallas. It's just one of those games where the matchup was bad for Dallas, and we thought it was better, and they just destroyed them. Like Dallas looked just could not stay with them at all. Like. Buffalo looks like a problem in the playoffs, whoever they're playing. They figured it out. The offense looks good. The defense looks good. Watch out. They're going to be a dangerous 5 6 seed. That's all, all I'm going to say. Like, it's just, you ever seen nice. this? Dallas, you ever seen a team that beats a quality opponent by 30 points, then gets beat by 30 points? Like, what? So they killed what they, they got. They, lo they lost to the Jets, didn't they? And then they, they beat Sam Fran or they mm -hmm. lost. Like, some of these, uh, then they beat Philly. Yeah, they Philly, just stopped right? Philly up. Yeah, they and beat Philly they last get, week. They killed them. Yeah, I, I never understand it. Like, what, they play a good opponent. They either beat the living shit out of them or they get their asses kicked. There's no in-between, and I, I just don't understand it. Yeah, they're, I think their defense is a little bit fraudulent because they have been getting carved up lately. Like, the Seahawks carved them wow. up, the Bills, the Eagles. Like, I know because we talked about Duran, uh, Duran Bland pick sixes. But if you look at even him, he's a prime example. Mm -hmm. he, he cheats every time on the play to get a jump. If he jumps it and times it properly, it's a pick six. If he doesn't time it properly, it's a touchdown going the other way. So he's the he's the definition of what their defense is. It's a home run swing. They either hit the home run or they flat out strike out. There is no in between. And this week yep. they struck out. So, all right, let's cap this one off with an ugly game to with an ugly end too. Uh, Baltimore twenty three, Jacksonville seven. Baltimore is my pick right now to win the AFC. Uh, Lamar, 171 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Not great, but average. Trevor Lawrence looked hurt all game. Still throws for 264 and a touchdown. Lost two fumbles. One of them, he just decided to stop carrying it. Uh, Gus Edwards goes 16 for 58 and a touchdown. Uh, Keaton Mitchell looked explosive. He had nine for 74, but he's done for the year. I don't imagine you'll get him back till late next season. That yeah, it might be a full mix so. this year. Next I was year. sitting there. I was at a, a work Christmas party watching it on TV, and I just every time I look up, he looked like he was exploding. He was awesome. He looked good. Kind of a shame that it ended that way. ETN's been down lately. Ten for thirty-one, four for twenty-eight through the air. Uh, the receivers, Baltimore, none of them were good. Best one was Bateman, three for thirty-nine. Jamal Agnew leads the way for the Jags, two for seventy-one and a touchdown on a long touchdown. Zay Jones goes 5 for 59, 5 for 39 for Ridley, 4 for 12 for Parker Washington. Tight ends were good and great. Likely was great, 5 for 70 and a touchdown. Engram was good, 4 for 28. Justin Tucker was good, 12 points. Brandon McManus was not, negative 1. 
The Ravens defense got you by. They put up 13 and a half, and the Jags let you down with six and a half. Uh, what is there to take away other than, like, I want, I guess, the quarterbacks. Lamar, I think, is high end QB1. Lawrence is pushing closer to QB2 with every day. I yeah. don't want any running back with the exception of ETN. Although Gus could get more usage again with Mitchell out. I don't really just, want any uh, pass catcher on either side right now, the way they're playing. And the tight ends, I think, are both low-end to mid-range tight end ones. What do you got? Yeah, the the weird thing about this game is how uninvolved Zay Flowers was. Like, he ran a ton of routes. He was the guy on the field the most. They just gave him one target. So I don't know what the heck that was all about because he's looked really good lately, and he just saw no work. And we're like, uh, all right, strange. And then I'll like, it's just, I don't know. I, I could not figure that one out for life. me what was going on. Yeah, it sucks for Mitchell, like you're talking about. So you could play Edwards, but he's going to get San Francisco and he really needs to be super efficient. So the passing down work isn't going to be there. So good luck with that one. There'll be like a, a RB3 for me probably next week. Lamar's instead, like you talked about. On the flip side, T Law went into concussion protocol. So he might not even play this week. So that Jaguars offense is going to be more just extreme because they're going to have Bethard as their quarterback. And good luck trusting those guys in that situation when you're in the semifinals, right? Um, ETN, like you talked about, he's good. He's had a bad game. And Ridley, we can talk about this with Jeremy, had 12 targets and did nothing with them. So that was fun. And unfortunately, Evan Ingram, he's just kind of – he's good. He's been really good, but he's had down week. That's just how it goes. And they play Tampa Bay next week, whose defense is pretty bad against the pass. So you can likely fire up the wide receivers and the tight end in the semifinals. But I'm not going to have confidence with it. Yeah, it's a lot of scary situations here. Um, yeah, yeah, not they just not describe the Jacksonville team. Like it's so, been so up and down this year for them. Even though they have a really good record, they've just been up and down the entire year. All right, that wraps a really chaotic week fifteen. We've got Eagles, Seahawks tonight. So good luck with that. Hopefully, everyone advances to week sixteen. I know I'm, I'm still alive in a few leagues, and I've dead and buried in a couple others. So. <clears throat> Hopefully you get there. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We will be back tomorrow at noon for our week 16. I keep forgetting. I'm like, what week are we in? It's amazing we got here so, fa so fast. But we'll be back tomorrow at noon for our week 16 waiver wire show. Uh, for Aaron and Jesse, thank you all for tuning in. Take care, and we'll catch you tomorrow.